this is a tutorial in this tutorial I'm going to talk about uh, direct and indirect expenses in the last video you would have seen the format that we are going to be using for profit and loss account in that account there is a section where we show direct expenses and there is the other section where indirect expenses are shown so it is important that we have better understanding of what are direct expenses and what are indirect expenses. So on the slide there is uh, uh, a transaction which is given, there is name of an expense which is given and some explanation along with it and we have to identify if uh, the expense is direct or indirect in nature. Now before we solve this let me quickly uh, re-emphasize on the definition of direct and indirect. So this is the profit and loss account, P and L account. You have credit side and you have debit side. And in the previous video, we said that uh, the first half of the profit and loss account is going to show direct expenses. And the second half will show indirect expenses. And the definition of the direct expenses is anything relating to getting the goods ready to be sold so up till you know manufacturing all manufacturing expenses all factory related expenses are direct expenses and then whatever comes after that all the administrative expenses all the uh, selling expenses finance uh, costs etc are going to be called indirect expenses so the qualifying criteria is uh, uh, essentially is uh, whether this expense is contributing towards the uh, cost of the product or towards the cost of selling the product, cost of um, you know, managing the product after it, it has been produced. So whatever contributes directly to the cost of the manufacturing uh, of the goods is called a direct expense. That is how you understand, how you distinguish between the two types of expenses. Now let us look at this uh, expense, excise duty on manufacturing of goods by a manufacturing house. Excise duty is, uh, 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 you know, paid on anything that is manufactured, produced on Indian soil. So that's a requirement. Uh, different kinds of goods have different percentage excise duty, which is uh, applied on them. So clearly this is uh, being done during the manufacturing. So the cost, the cost of the product uh, is, is going to include the raw materials, raw materials and you're going to add to it the excise duty as well. Excise duty, whatever else, whatever wages you pay on getting the goods manufactured. So excise duty is part of the cost of the product. So it, uh, it directly contributes to the cost of the uh, cost of the product which is being manufactured by this manufacturing house. Therefore, we are going to categorize this into direct expense. And that is our answer. Let's look at another uh, expense. Salaries paid to sales staff. Now the salaries are being paid to the sales staff. Clearly sales staff is going to uh, help in selling the goods, not manufacturing the goods. And whenever expenses are being done on non-manufacturing uh, functions, we call them indirect expense. So salaries paid to sales staff will come under selling expenses. And these are not contributing these are not contributing to the cost of the goods. All right, this is not cost of the goods. This is additional expenses. Of course, you know, you could uh, uh, come back and argue uh, that the selling expenses also increase the cost of a business, right, of selling that product. That is, that is fine. That's another argument, the total cost, but we are uh, segregating the two types of cost. The next item is carriage uh, outward. Carriage is the transportation uh, expense, transportation cost and outwards refer, refers to the direction of the goods. So business 
sells goods to the customers uh, and when you sell the goods the direction of the goods is outward so goods are going out of the business and goods are being shipped and you pay those shipping charges you know that's your sales policy you take care of the delivery free, de free uh, delivery policy uh, but you have to bear those expenses so carriage outward uh, is you know helping you sell it's kind of a selling expense because when you offer free delivery to people then you are expecting more sales to take place clearly this is not relating to the manufacturing of the goods therefore we are going to categorize this as indirect expense and it is going to be shown in the second half of the profit and loss account i keep drawing this t because this is a representation of the account so credit side debit side you will have an amount column or date column and so on so that's how account looks the next item is uh, discount allowed on cash sales so sales are happening and discount is being allowed uh, so why do you allow discount in the first place to you know incentivize your customers to pay you the money or you know to sell more uh, you you are reducing the price of the goods so that people you know buy immediately from you or buy more quantity from you so again this is clearly a sales strategy a selling expense uh, so we're going to categorize this into indirect expense and in the profit and loss account this is going to be shown in the second half uh, of the account Next up, we have wages paid to workers employed in manufacturing facility. Now here, you know, you have a manufacturing plant, for example, and you know, there's a lot of labor working there. Uh, so the wages being paid are directly contributing towards manufacturing the product, towards getting the product ready to be sold. Therefore, this is going to be categorized as a direct expense. It directly contributes to the cost of the product so in the profit and loss account in the profit and loss account this is going to be shown in the first section the wages paid to workers directly contribute to the uh, cost of the product the next trans uh, next item of expenses cost of the goods sold during the year now cost of the goods, uh, you know, this is a specific, this is a well-defined concept of accounting. It's called COGS or COGS uh, more popularly. Uh, cost of goods sold refers to the purchase price, the purchase price of all the goods which are being sold. And then you add to it any other expenses which are being incurred on getting the goods ready to be a finished product so wages any you know freight transportation that is paid on this any electricity charges power electricity coal whatever all the expenses that are incurred at the factory level are added up here this is called the cost of the goods uh, which are being sold now one important point to notice here is we have earlier you know discussed this as well the purchase should be you know this should include the units that are actually sold that are sold during the year because the unsold the cost of unsold goods is an asset to us that becomes a stock item so the purchase amount here should only include uh, the number of units uh, of the goods available multiplied by the price at which these were bought and the units should be only the one which are sold not the total purchases during the year that is uh, important uh, to be understood so this is cost of uh, the goods which are being sold in the profit and loss account this is going to be shown here cost of goods sold in the first section in fact the whole first section uh, is uh, you know drawn is created uh, in order to figure out the cost of uh, goods sold so whenever you're doing a business you you know you the strategy that you have uh, the financial strategy that you have is you first of all say 
uh, what is it going to cost me to build the product uh, to begin with so uh, it is going to cost me 10 rupees per unit so 10 rupees per unit is the cost even if I'm, I'm not thinking about the customer, I'm not thinking about retail outlets, advertisement, selling, hiring people, no. Only to manufacture the product, I'm going to, I, I will have to spend 10 rupees per unit. At what price am I going to be able to sell this? So uh, this is you know another decision that you take, another strategic decision that you have to take. And the way to do that is to think uh, that you know in order to sell these uh, goods what is the money that you'll have to spend on hiring the sales force on advertising on having an office in the uh, you know center of the market so all those expenses are going to add up and increase the cost so let's say another 10 rupee is added to the cost of the product and uh, then you would say these are the selling expenses so selling expenses are going to be 10 rupees per unit as well. And then the total cost of the product. This is the total cost of the product, which is 20 per unit. Now, how much profit do you intend to make? Uh, the you know, simplest way to do that is, well, I would like to have a 50% uh, margin. If you want a 50% margin, uh, then you know 50% of this is 10. So 30 rupees is going to be my price. So that's how price is going to be determined. So the COGS have a very important role to play in accounting as we move forward. So just be mindful of what it means. The whole first section has been created to figure out the cost of goods uh, which are to be sold. All right, next item is carriage inward. Carriage is transportation cost. Inward refers to the direction of the goods. Now, goods are coming into the business. Coming into the business, there is a vendor who is supplying you goods. And you are paying transportation cost. When you are purchasing things from your vendor, this means these are raw materials. And these may very well be finished products as well. But the idea is that these are not expenses relating to sales. These are expenses relating to getting the product ready for uh, resale. So therefore, this is a direct expense. Direct expense, this is carriage on purchase of the goods or the raw material. So in the profit and loss account, this is going to be shown in the first section, in the direct expenses, in the cost of goods sold. Next item is depreciation. Depreciation is recognized as an operating expense of the business. It's an expense. Uh, however, this is not directly related to the cost. It does not contribute directly to the cost of uh, manufacturing the product. Although, uh, you know, plant machinery would be used in the uh, process of manufacturing the goods, but the, the, the company law, the act, various regulations, they uh, categorize depreciation as an indirect expense. It's an indirect expense, particularly because it's an it's a non-cash expense. You're not paying actually this amount to anybody. Uh, so uh, the idea of uh, uh, having the two sections in the profit and loss account is to first figure out what is the cost of goods sold. Now this cost, you are not paying depreciation to anybody. So you don't want any non-cash items uh, lying around here. So typically depreciation is going to be considered as an indirect expense and will be shown in the second half uh, of the uh, income statement or profit and loss account. Then you have interest on loan. Any expenses on loan is going to be categorized as finance expense. And clearly this is nothing related, relating to manufacturing but raising of loan. This is an indirect expense. All indirect expenses are going to be shown in the second half of the profit and loss account. Next is factory power and coal and I'm making these you know very obvious for you whenever it is relating to factory it is contributing to the cost of the goods which uh, we want to sell during the year. This is directly contributing to the cost of the product which is being manufactured 
Therefore, this is going to be shown in the first half of the profit and loss account. Then you have electricity bills of the office of sales staff. Again, very specifically, it is mentioning that this is office for sales staff. This is not office of the factory supervisor. If it was a factory supervisor, uh, then the you know salary is paid to factory supervisor or all the expenses in the factory they can the names can be same as well you may have rent of sales office rent of uh, manufacturing uh, supervisor's office electricity bill of sales staff electricity bill of the factory outlet so uh, as long as the expenses are relating to manufacturing you categorize them as direct here this is uh, relating to sales therefore this is going to be an indirect expense and hence in the profit and loss account you will show this in the second half and these are brackets by the way I hope that's clear <laughs> that's it these were all the uh, items these were all the expenses that I wanted to look at there can be you know more names more expenses as well but the underlying principle, the qualifying criteria is whether or not an expense is contributing to the uh, manufacturing cost of the uh, goods. If it is, it is a direct expense. If it is relating to post manufacturing, to selling and administration, then it is going to be called an indirect expense. I'll see you in the next video.